First things first, I do want to thank Ophir Haddad, one of the subscribers to this channel, for giving me a little bit of constructive criticism. He noted some lighting problems as well as some audio sync problems. For this reason, I've added another light as well as I'm, I ran this video through a video correcting program I found online. So in this video, I'll be going over some Google Stadia news. Another in a long line of studies that tries to link video game violence to real violence. Some news about the Apple TV and video game controllers. And the last one is going to be how the Oculus Quest compares to the Oculus Go. First things first, we should be able to expect a little bit of news about the Google Stadia during a live stream that they will be launching tomorrow, Friday, June 6th at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Included in this live stream is going to include pricing, launch details, games, and a whole mess of other features, including latency, one of the biggest consumer concerns which may end up impacting our enjoyment of this service. One of the biggest things that may help it, though, are a lot of the internet-based updates that may be launching within the next few months or potentially years. One of them being the launch of Elon Musk's satellites, which are going to power the next version of the internet, I guess. And then we also have word on updates to the 5G network connectivity for not just mobile devices, but, well, Wi-Fi in general. So this next story is about the Department of Psychology at The Ohio State University conducting a study of, that attempted to link violent video games to real-world violence. As a part of this study, they ended up taking 220 kids between the ages of 8 and 12 and had them play three different versions of Minecraft. One had no violence, one had swords, and another with guns. How they would mod one in with guns, you got me, but they still tried to do it. They ended up playing the games for 20 minutes and then led them to another room that included disabled but real handguns. Um, as a part of everything that happened, 76 played the played the one with gun violence, and of those, 62% played with a handgun. And then of the 74 that played with sword violence, 57% of those played with the gun. And then of the 70 that played the non-violent, only 44 touched the gun. Those that did were more likely to point the gun at themselves or another, but the link suggested that those that played the violent versions were more likely to do so or pull the trigger to that end. Uh, this, of course, led them to the conclusion that use of violent video games or media of any kind increases the risk of being violent or aggressive in the real world. This is, of course, not the first, nor will it be the last, of studies that attempt to link these two versions of aggression. However, the same could be easily said. I, to be honest, I'm, I'm not even sure why this is an issue, because the same idea has been present in movies. It's been present in art, in like static paintings and drawings for centuries. But e even still, we focus on video games, N possibly because it's more interactive. But the fact remains that this is not the first study that tries to draw a link, and some of those often contradict e each other, running into severe problems. So. Whatever your position is, chances are you'll find a study pushing your very own beliefs on that end. So I'm, I'm going to just boil down this article real quick. 
Apple is getting a brand new controller to work with the Apple Arcade service that they launched recently. However, it's not going to be some Apple knockoff or some third party piece of junk, but rather they're going to receive support from the PlayStation model and the Xbox model. So the Xbox One controller and the PlayStation 4 licensed controllers you will have access to and will be able to use with tvOS version 13. That being said, don't need to work on any kind of external drivers. Well, you probably will, just to make sure that your OS is going to function on them properly. But beyond that, you're, you're good as far as your hardware is concerned. And the last story of the day is all about how the $400 Oculus Quest is going to compare to the $200 version of the Oculus Go. The Quest is better, hands down. For starters, processor is better. Snapdragon 835 running the Quest as, a, as compared to the 821 running the Go. Next up we have the display. There is a 1440 by 1600 display per eye running the Quest and a single 2560 by 1600 running the Go. So altogether that is 2880 by 1600 for the, for the Go, or the, the Quest I mean, and 2560 by 1440 for the, for the Go. On top of that there is an LCD panel running the Go and an AMO LED running the Quest. So your color profiles are going to be remarkably different with the, quest, with the Quest being much richer. And your, your blacks are going to be far deeper. You'll see deeper blues, reds, greens, all that kind of stuff. On top of that we have a 72 hertz refresh rate for the Quest and 60 for the Go. And on top of that, if that wasn't enough, the base version of the Go is only going to give you 32 megabytes or gigabytes of space, whereas the Quest baseline version is going to give you 64. You can upgrade both of those to give you double the space, but that is 250 for the 64 gigabyte Go and 500 for the 128 gigabyte Quest. That being said, the Quest 1's wins hands down just because you are going to be able to get that much deeper quality out of the Quest provided you have the money to cover it. And on top of that, the Quest is being marketed as a standalone headset for VR gaming, whereas the Go, it's largely going to be giving you VR experiences. And any VR player can tell you the difference between an experience and a game. An experience is going to give you maybe five, ten minutes, maybe, of playability, and ev even that is going for a stretch. Whereas a game could give you, well, depending on the on the game's size, it could give you anywhere from an hour to maybe fifteen. I'm pretty sure Job Simulator, for instance, is only going to give you about two hours of gameplay, depending on how you play it. And then, of course, there's the infinite mode, but we won't get into that right now. If you guys are still here, don't forget to check out my next video, when I'll be going over some E3 expectations and news and all that kind of junk. I believe that's a good place to end the video. If you guys liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm such a horrible person for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now.